CataractCoach.com, lysis of Senechiae, and cataract surgery. How do you stain that capsule with tripan blue dye when there's so much Senechiae? So first step here is a paracentesis, and then use the spatula or some other smooth, blunt instrument to separate, in a circumferential manner, the iris attachments to the anterior lens capsule. You want to be very gentle in doing this, and we're doing this just with balanced salt solution in the anterior chamber. So refill the chamber with like a second paracentesis and do the opposite 180 degrees. And this will just free the iris adhesions from the anterior lens capsule. Again, this is not a very difficult thing to do. So keeping the eye inflated, I'm going to have an anonymous resident here operating and she's going to go underneath here nice and easy and move that back and forth. Getting underneath there, very good. And that'll separate out all those attachments. So now the pupil is still small, but at least it's separated from the anterior lens capsule. Now we'll place tripan blue dye a couple of drops underneath the iris. We don't want a large volume here, just a little bit going under the iris. Again, we switch to the other paracentesis. This is the resident doing it now. And so we'll inflate the AC on the other side, make sure the AC doesn't collapse. This is all being done under balanced salt solution. No viscoelastic in the eye yet. And now we can go ahead and stay in the central lens capsule with more dye and go from here. Now, could you fill the eye with viscoelastic, then expand the pupil, and then stain it? Yes, but then you have to evacuate out of the viscoelastic because the viscoelastic may prevent the tripan blue dye from adhering or staining the anterior lens capsule. So particularly here when we're using a dispersive coating of viscoelastic. So now we have an eye full of viscoelastic and notice that it's not a full fill of the anterior chamber. It's about 70% full. We still keep the pressure relatively low. Using two instruments, you've seen this many times on our channel, doing a pupil stretch. Nice good stretch there. We'll go the opposite directions as well and get this pupil stretched out and that'll help. Now there is a pupillary membrane there. You see a little bit of that fibrotic membrane on the pupil margin. So let's first put in more viscoelastic. Now we can get some viscomedriasis, get the IOP up, and now we'll make the main incision. So all that was done with just two paracentesis. Now here's the main incision. This resident's doing a great job. That looks like a very good incision entering the anterior chamber now. And that looks like the triplanar technique we've talked about here on Cataract Coach. Now, before we do the capsulorexis, let's try peel away some of this tissue here. This is that fibrotic tissue or membrane that's covering part of the pupil. So you can grab onto it and pull it and try to remove it. And that's uh, something helpful because that's also preventing the pupil from expanding more. So it can grab onto that and try peel it off. Now you may get a little bit of iris bleeding right at the pupil margin, and a tiny amount of bleeding is really of no consequence. And then just take your time, try to peel off that membrane. And there's another little piece about 180 degrees apart, but it's not too significant. So let's expand the pupil a little more now, and now it's time for a capsulorexis. Now you definitely want a generous capsulorexis in these eyes, why? Well, the iris will adhere or stick to the anterior lens capsule and form sneakye, but the iris won't really adhere that well to the surface of the acrylic IOL. So if we have a nice, good five or five and a half millimeter capsular axis, then it will be able to prevent sneakye from making the pupil smaller than that. Here's hydro dissection. This is a relatively young patient. Let's get this lens nucleus out of the capsular bag. And we want it out of the capsule bag because we're not sure if that pupil is going to come down again. So again, hydrodissecting out of the capsule bag. Let's really dial that nucleus up so it's held by the pupil and the iris at about the iris plane. That looks really good. And then it can be evacuated from the eye. Let's go to the end of the case here. Sealing up the incisions. That looks good. There's a little bit of a membrane there on the left side of the pupil in your view. And we're going to just leave that in this case. It was very adherent, and we thought it'd do more harm than good to remove it. Putting some triamcinolone in the anterior chamber at the end of the case. Don't need much, a half milligram, maybe even one milligram. And then swirl it around. This is a patient with a uveitic eye. We're expecting a lot of post-op inflammation because of that. And having this triamcinolone on board is going to make a big difference.